Hey everyone, it's me, Rylan. So it is 3.11 on November 15th, 2019. And I wanted to talk about the buzzword, mindfulness. We are hearing a lot about this word lately. I feel like it's popping up on Instagram. Everyone is hashtagging mindfulness. People are uploading fucking pictures of them doing yoga that says mindfulness. And it's just, it is all over the place. But what does it actually mean? And what does it look like when it's practiced in your life? Now, this is not, what was I gonna say? This is my experience with mindfulness. I'm not gonna sit here and like, like pander about like the scientific stuff of mindfulness. This is all like my experience with it because it's a practice that I have really implemented into my life. So, there you go. Um, just to start off with, um, you know, definitions so we kind of have a baseline together of what we're talking about um miriam's dictionary defines mindfulness as one the quality or state of being conscious or aware of something and two a mental state achieved by focusing one awareness on the present moment while calmly acknowledging and accepting accepting one's thoughts feelings and bodily sensations using as a therapeutic technique which dbt we'll get to that and also um another definition that i really liked was um mindfulness is the self-regulation of attention with an attitude of curiosity, openness, and acceptance. I like that. So let's go from there. Let's talk about how mindfulness plays a part in my life. So I made a video a couple months ago talking about how, I don't even know what it's called. It's something, it has the word social media in it, like, like, like uh, staying away from social media can improve your mental health or some shit. And I talked about how, and again, this was probably like three months ago. Honestly, maybe longer. I don't know how long I've been doing this. Six months? I don't fucking know. I think six months. What I decided to do was Apple, um, on their iOS 6 update, um, they decided to add a feature called screen time in which it measures how much you are on your phone. It measures how much you use each app, how many times you open your phone, and then there are certain features that you can um, implement. And even though this may not be a built-in feature um, on Android devices, I know that there are apps for this. So if you're an Android user, you can also use this tool as well. But basically, um, one of the most important things I found was that you can set a daily limit on your phone of how long you want to be on your phone. So I set a daily limit of, I think, an hour and a half. And basically what my phone will do is it will track how long I've been on my phone um, cumulatively throughout the day. So if I'm on like Instagram for seven minutes and then I check my Gmail, like, for three, like 10 hours later, it's all accumulated. Um, and what's really helpful to me is that if you go over the time limit, so if I go over an hour and a half for a day, it will, if I try to open an app or like a website or something like that, it'll come up with a notification saying like you've reached your time limit. Um, and it'll say, ignore for one minute that's the new feature it used to be only 15 so ignore for one minute ignore for 15 minutes or just ignore and that gives you the option to like log back into these apps for you know one minute or 15 or just say like fuck it i'm on instagram got things to do um so that is basically what screen time does and then it actually gives you analysis at the end of the week 
telling you like your screen time is down by 7% this week or it's up by 80 or whatever. Um, so I started using that feature on my phone like six months ago. Um, but even more importantly, I think what impacted me even more was that I decided to turn off the notifications for all of my social media. I personally only use Instagram and Facebook. I'm not on Twitter, or Snapchat, or any of that stuff. So I took a risk and I decided to turn off all of my notifications. So I wasn't getting push notifications on my phone if someone liked my picture or commented or any of that. I would decide to check my phone number one in the morning and that's when I would check it and I would try and make like my posts in the morning. Like if I had something to say, I'm very big about like time hop and like reflecting on my past and uh, maybe like resharing a memory from like five years ago. But I would designate the morning to check my phone and upload whatever I wanted to and then like check it again later. Um, and this was extremely monumental and life changing because I found that I was no longer scrolling on my phone and wasting my life. Now, on a personal note, I kind of did this because I realized that on Facebook, I wasn't getting as much attention or as many likes or comments as I was on Instagram. So I started to move more towards Instagram. And all of this is in that pursuit of self-validation and us feeling worthy and wanted and important. You upload that picture of you in your bikini and you only get one like or two when you wanted 15 or 50 or 5,000. And in my case, if I upload a picture, it'll maybe get like one, two, three, four, five likes. And if I've uploaded something specifically, like that's very vulnerable, maybe talking about my mental health or something like that, and I don't believe it got the attention it deserved, that affected my mental health and made me feel like shit about myself. It made me feel like I was insignificant and I had shared a part of myself with the world, or even if it was just a good selfie that I felt confident about and I wasn't getting the attention that I wanted, it was affecting me mentally and I felt like crap about myself. And of course, that's a, it's the whole concept of like, you know, FOMO, fear of missing out. You see all these people's going to parties and the celebrities and their big lavish lives and you look at your life and you go like, wow, I am a piece of shit and I don't matter. So that was my first step into mindfulness of being like, I am turning off the notifications of my phone because I am going to be in charge when I want to um, engage in like technology and get into the world of social media. That was a really big thing for me because I found that I was more relaxed, that I wasn't like worrying if I did just upload a picture, I wasn't worrying if I did just get five likes in a row because I wouldn't check it until later. It, it like eliminated that stress. So that was my first step. Secondly, the biggest thing that I'm doing now um, mindfully in my life as like a whole, as a complete package, is I have something called mindful Sundays with my girlfriend. We live together. So what we started doing um, concretely, this only started three month, three weeks ago that we decided we're doing this every Sunday, but we had tried it maybe three times before. And back then we called it going off the grid. And that would just mean that we would not have our phones and then we would literally cover up the clocks in our house. So we had no, um, you know, just no connection or engagement with the outside world and social media and technology and all of that bullshit as a way to stay mindful and present in the moment. And I'm gonna get to what that actually means and what that looks like. Um, but now we do it every Sunday. So, like I said, we do the same thing. Now we check our phones in the morning. That is our designated time to look at our phones. And then we will put our phones in a basket on silent and we cover up all the clocks. So we cover it up on the microwave and on the stove. And like I take off my Apple Watch because 
not only obviously as like a clock, but like I get notifications on my phone. So I, I take off my watch. So we spend the day, we are allowed to watch television. That's like our one thing that we allow. And we just are there with each other. We're just there and present and living. It's honestly amazing how how much you don't realize how much you realize your phone. I know that was a lot of like words that honestly made no sense together, but I'm just pretend I didn't say it. Um, what I noticed is how easy it is to simply be watching television and a commercial comes on and when that commercial comes on, if it's Hulu, it's a minute and 30 seconds. You just instinctually grab your phone and start scrolling. And I think that is fucking ridiculous. The fact that we as a society are programmed to not be able to just like sit and chill for 90 seconds and you have to grab your phone and start scrolling on whatever it is, Reddit, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever other stuff there is, that that's kind of the level that we are at as a society. And you might be watching this and be like, Rylan, I don't even use social media. Fuck Instagram. I'm not about that life. That's cool, but reality check, you're watching me right now on YouTube. So just saying, just saying. But I realized how much we depend on technology and this video is not about technology. I'm gonna like try and move faster and make it just not about like how we're dependent on technology and like get rid of your phone. That's not what I'm saying. It's just, I realized when we have mindful Sundays, how um, important technology is in our lives as simply as um, if you're watching a TV show for me, like I was like checking IMDB and realizing that like I can't just check my phone to look up who that actor is or you can't Google something if you want an answer for it. If you have a rash on your arm, you can't just go on webmd.com and look up for the answer because these are things that we would normally do. We don't realize how much we use our phones and the internet and stuff like that or Alexa devices. Thank you. Quiet bitch. Uh, like stuff like that. We really rely on it. So mindfulness comes in and now I'm going to talk about it like as a general idea and what it looks like. So what does mindfulness look like in a regular day? Mindful of the lotion that you put on. This is lavender lotion of putting it on your hands, maybe paying attention to how it feels, but smelling it. How does that smell? It smells delicious. It's, sm it's calming to me. It's lavender. It's sweet. My hands feel softer now. Or maybe you're in the shower and you take a second to feel what it feels like to have the water on your skin. Is it a little too cold and you need to turn it up to be hotter? Does your body wash smell really good? When you take a drink of your water, is it really cold? What does the straw feel like in your mouth? What does it feel like if you are eating a piece of pizza and you really have to like chew to get it off? But if you look at the world, I mean, you have to be mindful when you're driving in a car and make sure that there's nobody next to you that you're gonna run into, like you're paying attention to that. But th that's more so paying attention. And there's a difference between paying attention and being mindful. Paying attention is like, oh, okay, I'm paying attention that there's a person talking in front of me. But being mindful is maybe thinking like, honestly in your head, like I'm really bored right now and I wish I wasn't here. Or noticing that that person has some crusties on their lip or that they're talking really fast or something like that. Those are all small moments of being mindfulness. You don't have to be fucking extreme like what I'm doing and just like, disappear from the earth and go off the grid. The thing is, is that it doesn't need to be ongoing. Like I said, it's not meditation. You don't have to be mindful in every second of every day. That would be fucking exhausting. That would be very, very difficult. So you don't have to have that pressure of, I need to be mindful of everything in my life. That's not it. But, and then yeah, next step up is meditation, which a lot of people are afraid of because they feel that their minds can't quiet down and that they're distracted. That's a whole different thing. But 
I just realized through my practices of having mindfulness Sundays or off the grid or whatever, and the experience of covering up my clocks, uh, is just how dependent we are on technology and how we just don't connect to the world around us and how we don't connect to people around us. Um, specifically, ooh, specifically when I have these days uh, with my girlfriend on Sunday and we have mindful dinners, we do not allow the television to be on or any music. If we do want music to be on, it's calming music like Beethoven or Mozart because we actually like classical music. But I found that whenever we have these dinners, we are so much more attuned to each other. And I've learned more about her in these mindful dinners that we've had, like the three of them that we have had in like the over year that I've known her. Stories come out. You notice things about them because you're actually paying attention. You're there present in the moment with another human being. And that is something that we obviously don't do because, you know, technology, we're on our screens, all of that stuff. And it's just really beautiful to pay attention to another person and be there with them. So it's the little things in life that you can do and just say, oh, okay, I'm noticing that. I'm on the subway right now in New York and there's a baby crying and it's pissing me off. Fuck that baby. Little things. Little tiny things. That in the big picture, like I said, scientifically will change your life, will change your brain chemistry, and ultimately make you a happier person. So that's my experience with mindfulness and it has greatly changed my life. I don't have my notifications on my phone still of Facebook and Instagram because I don't care. That's what's up. And I just encourage you to find simple moments during the day where you can be mindful. Really taste that piece of chocolate that you're biting into. What does it taste like? What's the texture? Does it crumble? Does it melt? They're all beautiful things. And I feel like when you start to pay attention to the little things in life, you start to have more gratitude. And you really start to just feel more grateful for the people around you. And you feel grateful that you have, you know, that lotion next to you that can calm you down and make your hands all smooth. So I encourage you to practice mindfulness in whatever way that looks like to you. And remember, don't judge it. You don't have to dwell on it. It doesn't have to be 15 minutes. Just notice and continue. Continue on with your day. That's all it is. That's all it is. So I hope this was helpful and I hope you guys have a great day.